Hi, so far I made three videos about the pawn game on my channel and this one will be number four. But this video will be nothing like the others because to make a pawn game I will not use a basic programming language or C programming language or not even assembly. I will use one of these fellows right here. And this is AI-3-8500 IC. This is pawn on the chip. And it was made by General Instruments back in 1976 and this particular one is from 77 and it was first generation um, ball and pedal that's the original name of the IC um, and it was widely used back then in home pong consoles and almost all of them use one of these inside or some of the later version of these and this particular one has six selectable games uh, tennis, that's like Pong, um, soccer, squash, practice, and two rifle shooting games. Uh, it produces just black and white uh, video composite signal as output, and it does have a little bit of sound. So, I was very keen to try to build my own home Pong console using this chip. So I gathered some schematics, some parts, and activated some of my friends here on YouTube. Uh, to help me out because I knew nothing about these. So yeah, the first test I made um, using a proto board, um, and here it is. This lovely mess of wires is my home pong console. Um, so I'll show you a little bit more closer, but uh, for now let me power it on and show you what I have so far. So more power and. Here we go. Yeah, it's not very stable as you can see. Wait, let me start. Here we go. As you can see, there are some parts missing because uh, I didn't complete this build. Uh, the pedals are missing and you know, some other stuff. Uh, but the concept is there, so. Let me show you how this looks like. Yeah, I have wireless controls on the pedals. <laughs> so here it is, this big mess of wires is my proof of concept for the Pong game. Now what do we have here? Now this is our main Pong chip here and it gets powered by this voltage regulator here which produces 6 volts. Now the reason for this unusual 6 volts instead of uh, usual 5 is because this chip was actually designed to be powered by battery cells. Now if you connect 4 or 6 battery cells in series you can get from 6 to 9 volts. Now in datasheet it says that this uh, requires power from 6 to 7 volts. It doesn't actually specify the maximum uh, voltage, but I read somewhere that you can power it uh, with the 9 volts as well. I never actually tried that, and for safety reasons, it's just 6 volts. So there are several pins on this chip that are required to produce video output signal. Uh, there is one pin that produces just video sync signal, and there are several other pins uh, here that each of those produces different element from the game. And we need to combine them all together using the OR gate, um, which is hidden behind these wires. And finally, after all these resistors, we have our uh, composite video output signal here. Mm. To make this chip actually do some use useful work, it does require 2 MHz clock signal. Um, so initially I just used this Arduino Pro mini board to generate um, the 2 MHz uh, square ray signal because that was the easiest thing for me just to program it and this combination works just fine uh, but you know just using this whole board just to produce a clock signal doesn't really make sense and uh, they are from different <laughs> eras so yeah um, initially okay but the, you know, I needed to find something more um, elegant to produce a clock signal and this is the reason why we have this upper board right here so these are all just clock generators um, different um, types of uh, clock generators so this here is initially um, the clock generator which uses the coil and the transistor 
and um, it was part of the schematics for this uh, Pong chip but I actually never managed to get exactly the correct frequency with this and I couldn't uh, find a way how to tune it uh, perfectly so I kind of abandoned this, um, this solution so the easiest solution is right here using this crystal oscillator where we where you have crystal and the oscillator everything packed nicely inside and all you need to do is just power it on and it will produce the square wave uh, signal um unfortunately i couldn't find the two megahertz one so this particular unit is uh, declared at four megahertz frequency so uh, to make this work i just added a single uh, flip-flop ic uh, which I use to divide the frequency by half. So here we have 4 MHz output going right here and here we have 2 MHz clock signal and this solution works just just fine. But my favorite solution is this one right here because it's so simple and elegant. Um, it actually uses the NAND gate uh, right here and with the capacitor hidden right behind it and a single resistor uh, to produce um, uh, frequencies from 1 to 20 uh, megahertz so instead of single value resistor I just use this trim pot so variable resistor so that, that I can uh, fine tune it perfectly to 2 megahertz uh, frequency and this is my favorite solution because you know fine tuning this little trim pot is so satisfying um, that you know I, I really like this solution so at the moment I didn't connect the controllers for the bats also I don't have the audio line connected and the reason is because uh, everything here is very very fiddly there is no more room uh, for uh, continue developing the game here and if I touch anything the capacitors change uh, and I get weird artifacts on the screen so as the Captain Commodore suggested, it was time to move on from these protoboards and to create something a bit better using these prototype boards where I can solder uh, the components on. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think that I would do any better job than this. So instead, what I have done is I asked good people from PCBWay to help me out and help me to produce uh, some PCBs for my little project. And they said, yeah, sure, why not? So until my PCBs arrive, <clears throat> um, let me show you the schematics for the Pong game itself. And let me show you how I uh, created the PCB layout and the uh, Gerber files and uh, how did I actually order my PCBs on PCBWay.com. Okay, so this is the schematics that I use for my little project and as you can see there is not many elements here and that was the idea of this chip just to be able to create the system with a few elements um, necessary to make everything uh, work. So here we have our main Pong chip, here is the voltage regulator to generate 6 volts, uh, clock generator is right here. Then we have those lines to generate video output signal going through OR gate. Uh, sound is on separate line right here. Of course ground and VCC to power the chip. And then we have selector between those six types of games. Um, reset button here and then um, <clears throat> four lines to four pins to configure um, different elements of the game. Uh, and in the end we have two lines for the player controllers and that's about it this is the whole schematics so let me show you how did I create PCB layout uh, out of this schematics and uh, what application did I use and how did I place my order on pcbway.com and by the way my PCB is just arrived so yeah we'll take a look at that a little bit later Okay, so this is the PCB layout and as you can see I use a fritzing application to create this, um, this uh, PCB uh, because I don't know, I kind of used to it. So what you see here is two side, uh, two layers uh, PCB. So we have uh, lines on both sides uh, of the PCB um, and everything here is true hole. 
so um, no SMD um, elements here. So our um, voltage regulator part is right here um, and then we have a main chip of course right here. Uh, this is our uh, OR gate um, to combine all the video signals and then video and audio are going um, out through this section right here. So this here is video output signal and this is out, uh, audio. <coughs> uh, and then we have um, uh, selectors for, for the games. Uh, I just um, use uh, four of these because I didn't include um, two shooting games. So I don't need six selectors, just, just four of them. And then uh, here we have those configuration lines for the angle and the other stuff. Um, and here is our clock generator um, part. Uh, what, what you actually see here is um, that uh, NAND solution using a NAND uh, IC. And, uh, and of course we have a um, left player controller and a right player controller. And that's about it. So yeah, now let me show you the other version um, with uh, with uh, crystal oscillator. It's almost the same, uh, except um, except the clock, clock um, generator section is a little bit different. And of course, <clears throat> because the, the, there there were some um, modifications that I made in the last minute before I uploaded my Gerber files. Um, to PCB way, uh, on this version of PCB, I did make one mistake. Um, I forgot to connect this line um, right here. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. So we will need to do some uh, bodging. Yeah. I guess that's kind of in spirit of these machines. Hmm. Okay. So let me show you the other version as well. And here is the version with the uh, crystal oscillator. So here we have crystal oscillator. And <clears throat> of course we have um, that flip-flop um, that I used in my case, uh, just to divide frequency um, by half because I have crystal oscillator um, declared at four megahertz clock and we need to. Uh, but I, I have added um, these jumpers right here so that you can avoid um, using uh, <clears throat> this flip-flop IC. If we place exact um, frequency uh, crystal oscillator here, we don't need that flip-flop. We just go directly and connect everything to, to the palm chip here. And everything else is the same. Um, and like, like I mentioned before, this line is um, here, which is actually missing on that uh, previous version. Of course, I forgot to mention about the reset button here. Also, not completely designed um, <clears throat> as it should be. Um, we will see what I will do about that. Um, but yeah, that's that's about it. So now that I had um, PCB layout, um, it was time to. Uh, order my PCBs on PCBWay.com. So the way how you do that, it's actually pretty simple. So we need to generate Gerber files from this from this layout. And before we um, do that, uh, in, the important thing is to check that everything is okay, that we don't have any kind of conflicts or there are some lines that are just too close to each other. So there is. <clears throat> Uh, design rules check, uh, check right here um, and it's important to run it so the system can check that everything is okay and once so that we are sure that um, <clears throat> we are ready for production um, then we can um, create uh, Gerber files and it's really 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 easy here just to export for production and then extended Gerber files. So let's go to desktop and I will generate a folder which we'll call the bunk. <clears throat> and 
everything will be stored in that folder. So these are our Gerber files. These are files that we are we need to uh, upload to pcbray.com um, so that they can build a PCB for us. But you cannot do it just like that. You need to uh, zip these files, compress it into single file. So let me just do that really quickly. Yeah, the punk zip find create. And this zip file is the one that we are going to use to place our order. Now that we have the Gerber files, it's time to go to pcbray.com and place our order. Okay, and there is one more thing that we will need to know um, to place our order is the dimension of the PCB itself. And the way how you see that is if we just select the PCB uh, here, this layout, and uh, then we can just see the dimension of our PCB and these are the important because PCBWay.com will ask for this information so um, I don't know if you can see this maybe if I can yeah so let's let's try to so here it is this these are the dimensions so um, for mine um, project it's 100 by 80 millimeters so yeah that's important okay now that we have our Gerber files and we know the dimension of our PCB uh, it's time to place order on pcbray.com and it's very very easy so the first thing that when you open the website you see this instant quote and that this is exactly what I have used um, it's very simple you just enter the dimensions of your PCB, uh, choose number of um, pieces that you want to order, and five is the minimum. Uh, we will leave the two-layer um, board because we have lines on both sides of the PCB, and let's code now. And on the second step, there are plenty options to choose from. Um, but I leave everything as a default except for two things. Uh, which I like <laughs> very much and that's the soldering mask and the seal screen so basically in my head that's just color of the PCB and the text on top of it color of the text on the PCB itself so yeah solder mask is um, uh, color of the PCB so like background color let's choose yellow <clears throat> and for seal screen uh, let's go with black so it will be like black writing on top of the um, yellow background. That's about it. And that's the fun part. <laughs> yeah. And the uh, next thing that you need to do is just choose the way how do you want uh, your PCBs to be delivered. Uh, right here, uh, choose the, your uh, destination uh, and it will automatically uh, calculate uh, shipping costs. And then you will um, save to cart uh, and then in the next step they will ask you to upload the Gerber files uh, and once you do that it will take a bit while for them to check are the Gerber files okay they are ready for production if they validate that your Gerber files are good for production uh, you will get options to pay uh, you do that and a couple of days later you get your PCBs okay so let's open this up and just to mention, this video is sponsored by PCB Way. Nice. Let's see, what do we have here? And this opens right here. Oh, cool. Hey, okay, we have a pen. Do you know about pen? That's nice. That's cool. And here are PCBs. Yeah, I ordered the blue one for the um, <coughs> for the um, NAND uh, logic uh, clock generator using the NAND IC, and the red one for the um, uh, crystal oscillator. Yeah. They look beautiful. So, which one to open? Hmm. 
both of them maybe yeah mm, let's go with the crystal oscillator <coughs> Then here they are. Oh, lovely. This is really nice. Okay, it's time to do some soldering. Yeah, I can't wait to see this actually works. <laughs> if, if it really works or not. Let's hope it does. Yeah. Okay, it's time to uh, build one of these, or maybe both of them. Um, let's go with the blue one first. So this is the one with the NAND gate uh, clock generator. Yeah, <clears throat> and the common practice would be to start uh, with the lowest components first, so that would be resistors and uh, those um, small capacitors. Uh, but um, the way I made this board is there's plenty of room for everything, so I don't have to worry about that. So maybe start with the IC sockets first, or maybe just to uh, populate the power circuit here with voltage regulator and um, and build a clock uh, generator to see is that working okay before anything else. Okay, let's let's see. Uh, so the socket is, I don't have any good quality socket, but this will be just fine for now. So maybe just solder uh, the socket first. That, yeah, let's, let's solder the sockets and then, um, then we will see. Okay. So I don't have a socket with the correct, uh, number of pins, but, uh, I remove uh, one set of pins, so yeah, like so. <clears throat> so yeah, and I need to do the same thing with the other one as well.
Okay, and it's time to place the chips into their sockets and test this little build. Is it working or not? So, let's begin. So, let's go with the OR gate first. Uh, it's going great. Need to bend this legs just a bit. Is this going to be okay? Yes. Okay. Let's continue. Going in or not? Ah. We are in all legs. Okay, nice. Okay. And it's in. And we need to put this little jumper. There we go. Okay, we are ready for first test. It's time to power it up. Where is my power? And see what do we have. So I connected just the uh, composite output. Uh, this watch cable, <laughs> yeah, it should work. Okay, so let's go with the power. Oh, we do have something. Haha, <laughs> we do have something. And this is uh, badly designed. I should do something like this. Okay, now it's bad. Okay, and now if this really <laughs> works. Um, this should be really satisfying part. Just fine tune this. Yeah, we're doing something. Oh. Haha! <laughs> Haha! It works! <laughs> Bloody hell. Okay, let's see. Let's reset it. And it works. Wow, the reset takes just too long. Maybe I did something wrong. Hmm. Let's switch the some to some other game. So this doesn't do anything. Where is the pong? Oh this, what's this? This okay, I need to um, install the controllers. I need to uh, install those um, jumpers for the configuration uh, for the ball and everything and see why I'm not able to select more games. For the next step yeah. uh, I plan to solder these uh, controllers so from potentiometers uh, but I don't have the correct size <laughs> and there must be something wrong there always is so yeah um, so plan is just uh, solder some pins um, and then uh, part of the male header pins and then uh, just hook up the controllers like so and that's it for, for now and um, when i was testing it before i had these um, dip switches <laughs> in incorrect position so that's the reason why i couldn't choose the correct game so they are working fine um, so yeah that's about it so um, 
and of course I need to fix uh, this missing trace that I didn't create here uh, for this left potentiometer <laughs> oh my god okay uh, Okay, so I'm finally done with the soldering and uh, what I made <laughs> for these uh, with these potentiometers is this. So the plan is just to hook them up like so. And it should kindly work. Yep, and this one goes like so yeah okay so here we go uh we need we need power where is my power okay I have power do i have tv on or not okay uh, let's see do I need to power this? Yeah, I guess I do. I guess I need. Why is no... Why there is no, 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 no... <laughs> okay, let's... Oh, we did have... Ha! <laughs> Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ew. oh my god, the image is terrible. <laughs> ah, but okay, you can see something, at least something. Okay, um, so let's reset it. And where are my. Oh, woohoo! It works! Woo! Where is the other one? Oh, here it is. Oh, the other one is more sensitive. <laughs> oh, wow, where is my ball? I don't see the ball. Um, okay, maybe I need to do some configuration. Oh, here is the ball. <laughs> okay, okay, I need to set up configuration pins. Um, where is my schematic? So that's this one. So uh is this oh ah uh -huh, so that's this one oh uh -huh. i just figure out something oh. <laughs> i i wire these <laughs> in opposite directions so this left one is um, this one <laughs> right on the screen and this one <laughs> oh my god I never actually checked that <laughs> uh, but this thing is okay okay let me try to play with my uh, both hands so okay so <laughs> oh yeah okay we definitely need to hook up some sound <laughs> but yeah this is great uh sound 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 okay okay so i connected the sound as well and let's try it now I remove these bloody mess. Mm -hmm, these. Okay. 
Uh, okay, let's see, do we have sound? Oh, I heard something. Oh, nice. I don't know, do you hear this? But let me try to... Let's try to reset it. Yeah. Let's reset it and let's try to... Oh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I need to get used to these controllers. Oh, finally. Oh, bloody. Oh. <laughs> nice. Nice, go, yes. Mm. Okay, finally. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Too late. This is okay. A, okay. <laughs> I forgot all about it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but, okay, so that's soccer. Mm. Oh, this is squash, right? Okay. Now. Okay. Okay, and the last one is uh, just practice. So practice should be, yeah. Oh yeah, one player game. That's nice. Oh, we do have some glitches. So. Go back to Pong game. Where is my other player? Oh, here. You are. Okay, up. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> Oh my god, this actually works. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, okay. Uh, bat size. We need to try the bat size. So. Oh, the small bat size. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay, I need to find the other one. Where? Oh, oh, here it is. <laughs> oh my, this is impossible. So the angle, oh, let's go back to original and change. Oh, this is the speed. Oh my god. Woo! <laughs> this is unplayable. I need to reset it. Um, right, okay. Oh, managed to get one. This is. Oh. Okay, so that's speed and the angle. Let's check out the angle. What that does. So, oh, it's, um, oh, wow. That's like, oh. So, yeah, this is it. Um, I'm so pleased that this little uh, creation of mine actually <laughs> works <laughs> with the sound.
Yeah. Um, and I would like to say thank you to PCB Wave for making these lovely PCBs for me. And um, it's absolutely not their fault that I switched the right, uh, left and right player <laughs> on both of them. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, I didn't try yet the red one. Um, uh, that's the one with the crystal oscillator as a clock um, generator. Maybe I should do um, live streaming, um, just populating this um, board and trying it out. Um, see how that works um yeah what do you think maybe i should do that i need to check for the um, do i have um, all the uh, necessary parts i do have one more pong chip i need to test it uh, is it working or not uh, and maybe to get the uh, right size uh, potentiometers for the players uh, it, will, it will be much better than these um, wires here yeah but that's all uh, that i have for you uh, today and until next time Goodbye. Oh, goodbye.